Maybe if we start off by you telling us a little bit about how you got into the arts and your journey in, in a nutshell that's led up to now so people can get to know you. Thank you. I will try to be brief <laughs> because I think it's longer than yours so far. <laughs> but uh, I started, um, I'm not going to go back to my childhood, but I'll start in, in undergraduate school. I started out as a painting major and switched my degree to art history. And then I got my master's degree in art history. And then I worked in art museums for 10 years as a curator and an educator. I worked three years as a curator and seven years as an educator. And, and so that's where my education uh, started, where my, my teaching, my training docents, my teaching visitors about the art in the museum came, that's where it all started. So, um, and so then, um, then I just decided that life was too short. I want to live where I want to live. Cause when you work in museums, you go where the jobs are, you know? And so I, um, gave it all up and moved to Colorado and started what was then called art biz coach. And it is now art biz success is transformed into that. So that's the, it in a nutshell, but um, it didn't start out as art biz coach. It started out as an art consulting business. And if people are watching and don't know what that is, it, art consultants buy art for other individuals. So for businesses, corporations, um, hospitals, hotels, so forth. And um, I thought it would be so fun to buy art for people. I thought that would be such a blast. And um, anyway, I didn't know how to run a business. 9-11 happened. And, but what did happen was the artists that I had known throughout my museum career were coming to me for help and advice um, because they heard I started this business. So it became this in early 2001, 2002. It became Art Biz Coach. That's awesome. And you wrote your book, Art Biz Success. It's now been 10 years, is it? The book is called I'd Rather Be in the Studio, The Artist's No Excuse Guide to Self-Promotion. It came, the first edition came out in 2008 and the second edition in 2011. And then there was an E edition in 2014. And then um, I think it was 2018 that the final, final fourth edition came out. I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> do you have you found that the obstacles that artists go through like you have eight eight obstacles that artists tell themselves right in your book and have you found that those have changed through the years or is it basically the same we you know i think um they're not necessarily obstacles but they are excuses so there's <laughs> they the book is laid out for excuses because the subtitle is no excuse guide so um so i uh oh we have got it right here <laughs> because it's been a while since i picked it up um i i got the hard copy right here but um what is laid out on are the top the top excuses that i hear or heard and and then my suggestions for countering those excuses. So I would say, um, if you want to talk obstacles, there are way more than eight. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the top eight excuses for not promoting your art. So, um, and the top one, of course, is I'd rather be in the studio, right? I, I, told, I tell all of my artists that just meet me that I couldn't have made this title up, you all. You all made up the title. I I just kept hearing the excuse over and over again. <laughs> so true. Yeah. And I think a lot of artists, it's a lot of it's in their head that I found a lot of people don't believe in themselves or they're scared. Mm -hmm. They're scared of money not coming in. They're scared of showing up on live video. There's just, they're just scared. Um, so I'd rather be in the studio is definitely one excuse, but there, yeah, there are so many other ones. What are some other ones that you hear very frequently? Um, I, this isn't really in the book, but, um, I'm not good at it. I'm not good at it, which is a story. Like that's a story, a self-fulfilling prophecy. When you say I'm not good at something, of course you're not going to be good at it. Um, the, um, the other 
excuses are, I don't want to bother people. Like I, I, um, you know, it, it, people say this all the time, even seasoned people, even people that have been around the block a lot say, you know, I just I don't want to bother my list. I don't want to, I don't want to bother people. So that's one. Um, they think it's going to take a lot of money. They say I'm not rich and it's easier than ever to promote your art. Um, I don't live in an art town. That's one I hear a lot, like as if there is such a thing as an art town. So um, I hear that a lot. So Actually, I'm, I'm an introvert. That's another one. <laughs> yeah, like all of us, <laughs> all of us artists. I live in a non-art town, and that was my excuse for a long time. And after you know, getting over the hurdles, I found that it's. I think it's easier living in a non-art town because you can stand out a lot better. But you're what a big are, fish. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, what are your rebuttals against some of their excuses? What, what What's your advice? Well, what you said is true. It is a mindset thing. It is a head thing. And the first thing I do when I work with someone is, um, and I don't usually work with people, sorry, this, this came up. I don't usually work with people at the beginning stages because, um, because that's what my book and my courses are for. But when I'm working privately with people or just talking with them randomly, I say, you know, just make sure that this is something you really want because there is something that changes inside, deep down inside, when you want to turn something that you love into a money maker for yourself. And I don't believe in telling people to follow their passion. I will never, ever say that because I believe sometimes your passion needs to be something that you love and hold dear and private over here, right? It's not necessarily something that you need to put a dollar sign on for it and put it on a shelf or hang it on the wall. Um, so I, I just, you know, I, I look for that kind of gut check. Like, is this something you really, really want? And if it is, um, that has to be your motivation, right? Yeah, um, I so can't, true. I can't remember what your original question was. Oh no, I was just asking sir, some of your some of your rebuttals against those excuses that you had named. Yeah, so it starts with the gut check. Are you sure you want this? And then if there is, let's make a let's make a plan because the the I'm not rich thing doesn't fly because oh my god, it's so cheap to promote your art this these days. It only uh, you know costs you time which a lot of people aren't willing to give, but way cheaper than it used to be. Um, so that's not, that's not it. Um, I'm an introvert. That's a tough one because we're all introverts. I'm an introvert actually. Um, and I think we all have both sides of the brain, uh, you know, both sides of the, um, of that, the inter a little bit introvert and a little bit extrovert, but I think that um, the I'm an introvert, it, come, it comes right back to how bad do you want this? And if you, you know, what do you want your legacy to be? And what do you want to regret more? Not doing something, doing something and failing, not even trying. I mean, there's just, you know, there's some whole, there's a whole level of coaching that can go into that. Um, the, I'd rather be in the studio you can be in the studio all the freaking time if you want, then what are you going to do with all that artwork? And my belief is that the artwork is incomplete until people see it, talk about it, buy it, live with it. Like it doesn't, you are incomplete. I've heard this time and time again from my clients and it comes from my background in art history. You are incomplete until you share that work with the world. You're never going to be complete no matter how many fabulous artworks you make. Um, and you probably know that because you have a lot of interaction with the public with your murals, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, d definitely. And the more eyes, I say the more eyes, the more dollars, because the more chance of people for the chance to see your art, it only takes one set of eyes to buy. 
Right. So you just put some art up at there's some paintings, not, not necessarily a mural. I just put some art up at our airport and it was right by the baggage claim. Not necessarily the most artsy place, but it was the most high traffic place. And I've gotten, I sold an original and just got contacted to paint another original from that. So it's just the more eyes equals the more dollars. And yeah, like that's, you were saying. Like that's the, great. But I do want to emphasize that it's more than dollars for a lot of people. It is fulfillment um, when someone else, I mean, art, and I'll say this until I blew in the face too, art is a form of communication. And if you're just constantly like, it's just you and the canvas or you and the um, block of wood or marble or whatever it is, or, or lump of clay, then it's, it's very hard to be fulfilled because that doesn't really talk back to you. I, I just, it does in a sense, it does if you listen to it, but, um, but you need that, you need that loop to complete. And all the artists that I know that are operating at a high level need that interaction. They need other people to see their art and talk about their art. Yes, buy the art, but that they're just unfulfilled until that connection happens. Yeah, you're so right. And there's some artists who, they want a connection more than others. I've, I've found like if they're not making something that's really meaningful to them, they don't want to paint at all. And yeah. I'm, I'm more of like in the middle of that. Like I paint for fun because I love it, but not everyone has a meaning to me, but it is amazing when somebody, you know, just passing by the airport, they message me. They're like, Oh my gosh, I loved this. This is perfect because of this, this and that. It's like that, that connection can happen at, you know, any time with that, whether it's in an email or at, you know, in person or whatnot. So one thing that I did want to talk about that one, I t tuned into one of your lives here recently, and I love how you're going live on Instagram and saying your bits of advice here recently. And you still were talking about abundance and money in that way. And we love to talk about, you know, making a living with your art in the Artist Academy. And we, you were talking about how a lot of people block themselves from, you know, making money, whether it's eliminating the belief or whatnot. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll try. I know I have no idea what I said on that episode, but I will, uh, you know, I think mindset is something that we all struggle with and it, it, it happens with the art and then it happens when you want to take the art into a business. So yeah, okay, I'm finally confident with the, with the art, but I don't know what the hell I'm doing with this business thing over here. And, and, and that I'm not thing comes in. I'm terrible at marketing. I hate to do video. I, you know, like all this stuff starts coming up. Um, so abundance is something that I think we have to practice. It's we, often default to the um the opposite right we often default to scarcity like there's not you know i can't find people i can't find the right people that's what i hear all the time i can't find the right people i just need the right people to to buy my art i need to get my art in front of the right people and that is um that's like it's like looking for a needle on a haystack and it's not being grateful for the people that are around you and the, the possibilities that they have for you and your business. Um, so, I mean, I think it's as simple as doing some exercises around abundance, whether it's, you know, like listing all the people in your life, listing all the people that, that have said they love your art. Um, I used, I have a file, you may have seen this. I have a file called loved um, that I keep, um, I've keep been keeping, I, when my coach, like in 2007 or 2006 encouraged me to do this and, um, I get artists that write me beautiful letters and, and now more emails, but lots of letters. I get lots of letters, um, that are hand painted and hand collage and all that stuff and just thanking me. And so I keep that file um, that is now like this thick. It's thick. Like there's like multiple files, and those are just the ones that are hard copies. So then there's all the e the e files that I've done, and that reminds me of when 
you know, when you get that rejection, when there's a, a crappy client, luckily I don't get many of those anymore, but, um, or when an artist is criti when you're criticized on social media or, or whatever, um, when someone just doesn't buy, go back to the loved file and remember all the people that loved you. So it's like what it's, and I do it all the time. I catch myself in scarcity all the time. Like there's not enough money to go around. Well, you and I both know there's an infinite amount of money. We can keep making money till, you know, till we're blue and, you know, that's not even the right, that's not even the right um, thing to say, but we can just keep making money. There's, there's no such thing as not enough money. There's no such thing as not enough to go around. Um, I, I think, but it, the mindset thing is to be grateful for what you have and, and practice. Here's another thing to practice when you're talking about abundance. Just walk down the street and look at more, 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 more. Um, I live in a fairly affluent neighborhood. Um, I, I actually, I mean, I think it's pretty affluent. It's not as affluent as a lot of neighborhoods, but, um, you know, just look at all the people that are getting new yards put in, or not yards, we don't do yards around here, but getting new gardens put in and, and new stonework. And there's so much abundance around and to say that the, the capacity for people to buy art is limited is not the case so just some abundance exercises can be useful and just to recognize when you're doing that to yourself because i do it too yeah yeah so true i think and like i will, will sometimes go back through my screenshots so like you i'll have screenshots and anytime someone comments something really nice I'll, and then i'll send it to myself and so i'll just in my phone that way i can just like it's right there whenever i need it and i'm like okay that that was nice. perfect perfect <laughs> that is that is a great thing to do yes yes yeah so what um let's see i'm just really looking for advice for artists that i know that you say you don't do a lot for in the beginning stages but most of ours is we basically take you from you're you're at a job that you want that you're that you don't really like as much and then we maybe go part time and then we go full time and just how to build it in the beginning stages and every podcast episode we ask people what is a good thing for artists to do whether it's mentally or physically they can go go out and do something what's something in the very beginning that you would recommend to artists or that okay. maybe you've seen other artists do and you're like oh that that's a, a, a no brainer something to do yeah, well, it's not true that I don't share information with beginning artists. It's true that I don't coach beginning artists one-on-one -on -one. just because it's, 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 private coaching is expensive and I have all that information packaged. So um, what I encourage people to do are, um, I wish I had the four things in front of me, but one of them is to join an artist organization or an artist group. I would, you know, it's great that there are so many online. We have our own community at Art Biz Success. You have your academy and there are, but I also want them to be involved in their art communities locally. So to find that kind of support locally, because I think that life of an artist can be very lonely. You know, you're by yourself all the time and it's you have these ideas to bounce off of people that you meet, but you also have the support and the understanding. I remember when I have a cousin who builds beautiful furniture. He's in Montana and I live in Colorado and he came down for one of my three day events here and he'd never been in a room full of artists. He didn't consider himself an artist. He's a, he's a woodworker. He's a furniture maker, right? And he said, it was so great to be in that room because people get it, like people got it in that room. And so him, that was really a major move for him to, under, to see that there were people that understood. And that's what people that, especially people that come to my live events, get it. Um, the other thing that we've encouraged people to do is to start their, their mailing list right away. And not necessarily with anything in mind you don't even have to sign up for constant contact or whatever you want to use you don't even have to do that yet but start figuring out who needs to you know who you need to stay connected with who you need to 
make sure knows about your art and keep some sort of a potential client database for that to happen. I really believe that the best transactions happen one-on-one, -on -one, not one to many, like not a bunch of email blasts, but one-on-one. -on -one. So networking, um, you know, inviting people personally to things. I think that is where the gold is in an art career. So getting organized for that. And then the, the final thing that I can think of is you gotta get the studio part down. You cannot have a business without the studio practice. If some, if an artist comes to me and says, I got these three paintings, I'm like go make 30 more of them and have them look like they came from you and not your teacher. And then we can talk about it because it's just, it, you, you cannot have a business without the studio practice. Without the art, you aren't an artist and you sure as heck don't have a business. So, um, so those are three things off the top of my head. Yeah, no, that's great. And yeah, I think you're right. It, it does come down to the time in the studio. And I think a lot of people will listen to podcasts and they'll read books to try to maybe surpass that time spent in the studio. And there's just, there's so just you no You cannot trade. replace that. And you can tell, I can tell when that happens. And I can tell when an artist is promoting their work prematurely. Like they don't, they don't have the language for it. They don't have the confidence in the work. It really tells, and I just, I just believe everyone is ready to do this at a different stage, right? We're, we're all ready to, you know, some people just share everything, you know, they're just an open book. Um, but art is so precious and your art is so personal and precious. There's a time when you really have to hold it close before sharing it with other people, like making sure that, you know, that this is yours before you share it with the rest of the world. Yeah. Or open it up to critique because critique can change things. Critique can change how you think about it. It absolutely can. And most people aren't prepared for that critique. So if you went to art school, you went through crits, right? You did that all the time, but most artists today didn't go to art school. So, um, and I say that only because of the sheer number of artists that are out there. So if you don't have that background and if you like me, like I'm not good with criticism. So I need to be, you need to be in a safe environment where people know the rules around criticism and, you know, and how to deliver it, how to deliver it safely. And, um, and just like putting things out there and saying, what do you think is not helpful to anyone. So that's like, it's like, um, that's like, I don't know. That's like opening up a vein. Yeah, it, it really is. And I think critiques, like you said, a lot of people who go through art school, like we did this in college, you sat around the room, but you're mm -hmm. amongst artists and artists know how to critique in such a way, say, say something good, then say something bad or say something they can do better more so. And you're right in a, in a group setting would be more so. And um, your first bit of advice was having an artist community. We actually just had a mural meetup. We had 30 artists from all over the United States here this past weekend. And it was more than just learning how to paint murals. People, they walked away, you know, just they have their people, you know, yeah. and there was two artists in Kansas City that got re got, got united and now they're they're going to go pass out flyers together just because it's someone else because a lot of people, a lot of artists, as you know, you, they, they don't have a lot of people either in their family who are full time artists, typically, or, you know, around them as friends. And so it's just seeing and meeting the people in person and just having the conversation of, yeah, this is possible. Of course it's possible. I'm doing it. She's doing it. And just having that example. And that's a really great space to share critique. So just, I'm just echoing your point yeah. really. That's wonderful that you provided that space for people. And it's, it is so important because often the people that we love can be our harshest critics and can be, they don't realize they're doing this. They're doing it because they want, they want the best for us. They think they want the best for us. Um, and, and by them, they poop on our dreams and, um, and we don't want to talk to them anymore. So finding that, that group, there's a whole, have a whole spiel about how to deal with that. But, but finding those people that do get you will help strengthen your resolve and um, keep you going forward. 
Yeah, so true. Mm-hmm. Um, can we get into a little bit of the spiel on it? Because I know, like, so, like, for, for um, my, my parents were very supportive. They're like, go live your dreams. But they were very, like, you want to be an artist? Okay, go for it. Yeah. Like, and so I had to prove it to them that I could do yeah. it. And now they're like, of course you could do it. And so I've, I feel like I've had to prove it to everybody because, I mean, even to myself at some point. And, and, but once you prove it, they're like, yeah, of course. So, Maybe let's dive into a little of that. Yeah. Well, the, this actually comes from personal experience because my mother, whom I love dearly and has supported me in every single aspect of my life when I decided to leave museums and just randomly moved to Colorado without a job, um, got, you know, I was in my 30s, got really worried about me and, and rightly so because she cared about me. And so, um, so the, the conversation went like this. It was, Mom, I love you. If I can't get your support on this, we're not going to ever talk about it. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. She never said another word. And she um, has been nothing but supportive. And, and still, to this day, she goes, I can't believe what you've done. You know, she still does that. Uh, so it, it really was me setting that really firm barrier with her. Yeah. It's yeah. Not, not easy. <laughs> no, it's not. It easy. took a it took a long time. I'm sorry, I'm gonna move this back a little bit. It took a long time for me to get to that point and a lot of um frustration, a lot of here we go. <laughs> a lot of uh, me like being really mad at her before that happened. So Yeah. yeah. Uh, I could see that and as as some a lot of people who are introverted too, and communi- communication skills aren't necessarily. The best. <laughs> I'm just like I'm my head's caught. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, go ahead. There we go. You're good. <laughs> this is what editing's for. We're good. <laughs> um, a lot of the times, um, a lot of people who are introverted, especially um, communication, isn't our best assets and so but everything just comes down to communication just even saying you know if, if we're not going to talk about this in a positive light then we're not going to talk about it right. so yeah if i can't get your support on this then then we were it's off the table for discussion yeah yeah um i had a client who's who dreaded her um sunday lunches with family it was lunch or dinner it doesn't matter but Sunday meal with her brother and her mother and she just hated the conversation hated all about it and said why don't you go to the movies and you can't talk <laughs> so so uh so I don't know if they ever did but uh you know don't put yourself in those situations and you know you have that power to and it's really a, it's a great muscle to exercise this kind of the standing up for yourself and standing up for your beliefs and and standing up for what you want and who you want to be and how you want to show up in the world is a you know is something that we it's a that's just a muscle that you exercise every day and you know you know which battles to pick and you know i i remember one time i i had a client send me a nasty email and I called him. It wasn't a client. He was a subscriber or something. I don't know. I called him. I said, let's talk about this. He backed down like way. Like way. It was so hard to make that call. It was super hard to make that call. But um, I, don't, I don't think he would have done that to a man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. That, that's so. de- de- definitely a thing. I just had an altercation or so. Or, um, communication issues with a client that they were and I had said the same thing but really though as a muralist and being a woman and a muralist a lot of people ask me all the time they're like you know how do you feel being a woman and a man so I'm just like I don't really see it like that mm-hmm. <laughs> like a lot of the artists and muralists I know are are women too like mm-hmm. I think oh. I think we're slowly catching up and so that's yeah, but <laughs> I don't think they realize the question that they're asking at that point. I mean, I know here we have something in locally called Babe Walls. And, and so there's a lot of women muralists in the area. And um, but I don't think people when they ask those questions, I don't think they realize how stupid it sounds. No, definitely not. 
<laughs> but I do you go back. I'm going to go back to what you said about communication. You you dropped something a while back and how important that is. And I demonstrated that in my setting the boundary. Look, like you have to communicate what you want and what your boundaries are and so forth. But this, this communication skills that are required, not just to build an, a business of any kind, but to be at a high level in the art world, the communication skills are huge, right? You have to talk to collectors at a very high level. You have to talk with gallerists. You have to talk with curators. You really have to be, you have to learn the language around your art, around the art business. Um, and, and this is, so in addition to like just art business stuff and marketing stuff, I mean, communication is a huge part of that marketing. So yeah. I want to emphasize that. Yeah, so true. What is a good way for people to learn all of that? Take my classes. No, <laughs> I, I, I am so I. It's such an emphasis in my courses that um, because I started out helping artists with their artist statements and their bios. You know, just because that was kind of before. Our, this is really dating me. That's kind of before every artist had a website, right? They had. Um, they were still sending slide packets to museum or to galleries. Um, I'll tell uh, uh, that's that's way before your time, but that's what we used to do. And uh, but the um, what was I talking about? <laughs> the, um, the the artist statement, the bio. So so one of the exercises that I give artists inside of my courses is to meditate on their art. And, and that means like just you, like just the artwork in front of you and a pen and paper and you just let the artwork speak to you. And this, when I used to write, used to write some reviews, art reviews for a couple of local papers. And that's just what I would do. I just plant myself in the gallery and just, you know, be there until the art started speaking to me. And I contend that the art will talk back. And people that do this say, Oh my God, it's transformative. So I do have a podcast episode with Kathy Reed. It's Kathy with a C on the Art Biz podcast. And I mention it because she took all of her meditations and turned them into audio files for her exhibition. So they were QR codes with audio files. Um, and when you spend this amount of time with your art, you really get to know it. And you, it, it's, um, you know, it's something that in in art school, you would be doing, you would be sitting around in the crit sessions, talking about the art, talking about the ideas behind the art and so forth. And short of that, you've got to find a way to come up with the language. So as far as communication about the art goes, there's that. And then the, the rest is just practice. As, I mean, I have never taken a communication course, but I'll tell you what, I've made a lot of mistakes communicating for 30 years, I've made a lot of mistakes communicating. And that's how I learned, <laughs> doing it the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, it just, it just, a lot of it is just practicing, you know, spending time in the studio, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but talking about it, talking about it with other people, that will give you skills. Like, you know, listen to what people say and... Um, and ask them questions about your art, what they're seeing in your art that require more than a yes or no answer. Like really seeing how people are connecting to your work. That will help you with communication. That's awesome. Okay. Well, that's, that's all the questions I have for today. Um, do you have any kind of any last minute marks that you want to say or any little bits of advice or anything? Yeah, I just, no, I don't. I, I mean, I, I just want to thank everyone for joining me and for, for you for doing the work to help artists. And because you're a busy artist yourself, I see, and they're really lucky to have your guidance and um, so I, I always appreciate it. It's kind of, this is an abundance thing, right? I could get 
I could get cranky that there were so many other people doing this work now, but I believe that we all have a message. We all have a different message to share and um, that you've the right people find you. And so yeah. obviously the right people have found you. So kudos for doing that. Um, those yeah. live, especially the live sessions, because it'll take a lot of work. I know that. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I think each of us we have our own ex expertise as well, like murals and gallery stuff. I like I don't know a whole lot about gallery stuff because I haven't really been in it. So we focus more on murals. But if anybody listening, you know, needs help with canvas and you know finding your voice and all of that, check out Allison. Check out her book. Check out her programs. Go to what is your website? Artbizsuccess.com. Easy. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out of your Monday. We really appreciate you. And I've looked up to you for a long time. So this is just great. <laughs> so, My thank pleasure. You. Thank you, Andrea. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye. You too. Bye-bye.